hold on. Yeah, you're doing it. This is the best part of the job right here. No oh, wow. kidding. That is amazing. That's is my that business your card. business card? Is that what you yep. hand out? I'm coming right now to get one. Welcome to Marketing Conversations with Lamp House Films, a show where we bring you access to tips and insights from today's marketing thought leaders. I'm your host, Josh Henry. Today, I'm gonna to be chatting with James Gregson from Lego. This episode is full of really helpful tips on how to find and engage with your audience on social media. A few months ago, when the world started shutting down, Lego launched the Build From Home campaign, a marketing message that on the surface feels sort of counterintuitive, but in reality was really, really successful for Lego. We basically at a, at a senior level decided that as a brand, we have a responsibility to parents, adults, kids that are stuck at home um, to provide them with entertainment. This was not a commercial message. We're not trying to sell product here. We are trying to support people that are honestly going through a really rough time. Our strategy team went together a creative brief in 72 hours. Um, and we were publishing content in support of that brief within 24 hours. Wow. Um, you know, here's building challenges, here's building tips, here's building instructions, whatever it was to give people that thing to do. The Pinterest data we got that the search for at home activities for kids was up 400% in like two days. <laughs> I am not surprised. I feel that <laughs> right? on a personal level for sure. <laughs> Exactly. I think we ended up publishing something like 90, nine zero pins worth of content in no support. Kidding. Uh, yeah. Um, that is a lot of content. It was. And I will say a lot of it was not original content. It's just repurposing it, different, giving it a different look and feel. Um, you know, they were original pieces of creative um, repurposed in the Pinterest format, um, you know, and reorganized in a, let's build together board presence. But using existing uh -huh. assets, existing photography of builds. Yes. That's cool. And so it's interesting to me that you guys, your, your sales are going up in a time when your primary marketing message is play with the Legos that you already have. There is no better product <laughs> that uh, would be better suited for being stuck at home the whole time. I think what's been very interesting is, is that uh, from an audience standpoint, we've actually um, brought in a huge number of new adult consumers, not parents. Um, you know, so that was either they know the product from when they were a kid and, you know, felt like getting back into it, um, you know, which I think is going to be a really fun, hopefully creative opportunity that we get to try and retain those new adults. Is that uh, something that you guys moved into strategically? Were you and your marketing saying, we need to try to get more adult fans of Lego? Or were you like, is that something that just organically happened and now you guys are adjusting? It organically happened. Hmm. It organically happened and in store, you know, third party retail, for example, is a massive sales driver for us. Um, but as a result of COVID, you know, our, our e-commerce, you know, direct to consumer um, sales has, flown through the roof, um, which is super exciting for us. And I think, you know, if you look at the future of business, I would argue, you know, looking at the impact of COVID, any business that didn't have a strong D2C platform, um, a digital D2C platform is probably struggling. You guys, more than anyone, are um, really high volume, really high quality. It's like every day something that clearly took a week to create is being mm -hmm. posted on your social. So what is managing that pipeline like? Okay, so that's a, one that's lovely to hear because that is definitely the, the goal. Um, I would caveat though, I think you'd be surprised. Um, you know, I think we have certainly this year, there is a over, there's an overarching statement where we want to do fewer, bigger, better things, hmm. uh, right? And that's at the entire global agency level. That is our our plan. Um, I think, and I say this to anyone that is new at Lego, Lego is not short of opportunity, right? There's so many things to do and to get involved in and, you know, places to go and take the brand. Um, but it's 
it really is, you know, I really buy into it and drank the Kool-Aid of this fewer, bigger, better approach because, yeah. um, you know, it's not necessarily about creating a brand new social media asset for a campaign, but it could be about repurposing five assets into one new asset to make it feel like a brand new asset. Hmm. And there you go. So there is that balance, right? It's not about pushing out a high volume of content. Um, and we consistently try and say like at its core, is this a good piece of content? I want to pick your brain a little bit on the way that social media marketing, we talked about this a little bit, but the way that marketing through social media is evolving right now, um, particularly because of COVID, but just in general, like how do you feel like things are changing right now? You know, we're, we're at a point where brands that are winning on social are leaning into paid media as a, not just an integral part of your social media activity, but they are in part of the same team. So right? just so just so everybody who's listening is yep. understanding, you're referring to ads on social media are yes. as important as just what you're posting. Correct. And that that sort of campaign or that initiative can't just be here's a social media campaign, here you go, media department or advertising department. It's gotta be one and the same, handheld, truly, you know, uh, an integrated component to a successful social media campaign. You know, on social, people consume such a huge amount of content. Um, and, you know, the platforms are not dumb, right? They've created a series of ad units across an attention span from low attention to high attention span, where brands can create different ad units and different content types across those attention spans to ensure you're, you have a solid chance of resonating with an audience that you're trying to reach, um, right? It's not about, although you still see it, see it to this day, taking a TV commercial, and running it on social. Yeah. But you still see it, you still see it. And I still talk about it and people are like, huh, that's really interesting. And you're like, I've literally been talking about this for 10 years. Yeah, because that's a big emphasis of ours. Like we will never let our clients just port things directly. It's like, we'll, we will on set reshoot a, a faster version of that scene because it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does. It, listen, it, it is, it's lazy, right? And it's lazy and there's no stretch of research that points to how it doesn't work. I think it's also being purpose driven in the fact that, um, as we talked about, right, there's no point in just publishing something on your social channel because it's important for the business. Social media has very quickly become the dumping ground for all things marketing communications, right? Just because your mom has a Facebook page or your grandma's on Facebook, there is a marketing expectation that, oh, well, we did this, we wanna get our message out there, it's free, let's do that, right? And you look at the effectiveness of that strategy, if you wanna call it that, um, and it's terrible, right? So. You know, we want to try and, and I always do this where let's say we're doing an announcement for a new Lego video game that's coming out of the X number uh, of people we have on Facebook. You know, if I was to do an organic target to an audience that would make sense for this, like a hundred percent make sense. People that like Lego on Facebook that are also video game fans. Um, let's assume it's a console. I'll put all the major consoles in there. Um, you know, you dramatically realize that maybe an organic post to everyone isn't the best approach to this, right? Because let's assume it's 10% of the total audience is the audience we want to reach. But we know that on average, on a good post, we're only able to reach 5% of our total audience. That is a, that's a good reach. It's still a lot of people. But then you've got 5% of that 10%. It starts looking at a very small number. And you push that back with marketing people and say, appreciate the desire and the need, here's what organic reach will get you for your desired audience. And it becomes a much more strategic conversation, right? And I think that's where, you know, the fewer, bigger, better, but really it's more about being strategic with who you're reaching with that fewer, bigger, better just ensures that the right content's reaching the right people. So part of that fewer, bigger, better, sort of the unspoken thing is then like more sharply targeted. Yes, I think that that is the purpose. I think it's, it's also to, to lean more heavily into the bigger opportunities. 
Just a few days after this conversation, Lego went on to become the most viewed brand on YouTube. Thanks again for watching another episode of Marketing Conversations with Lamp House Films. Lamp House is a production company that focuses on film-centered marketing campaigns. If you want to chat with us about your next campaign, we'd love to hear from you. I'm Josh at lamphousefilms.com. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. There's a lot of really great episodes coming up that you're not going to want to miss. For bonus content and extended interviews, make sure to sign up at the link in the description for our newsletter. Tune back in next week for our conversation with Brad from Woodstream. See you then.